Hello world, this is Morris, and I've been working on this NeuroCave web app. So, uh, here it is, uh, visualizing a uh, regular Pentatonics uh, data set, and I've uh, added some more of these uh, glyph size control sliders so that we can decouple the spheres in cubes on the left and right and control their sizes individually. This will come in pretty handy for the data sets for the Allen Institute that I've uh, imported. And I also have uh, these uh, connection, connection, these edge weight sliders over here. So you can independently control the uh, contralateral and ipsilateral edge weights. And you can also have uh, check boxes that make the ipsilateral and lateral edges disappear in uh, this mode here. And you can unlock the uh, left and right colorings. So you can have, like, say, a modularity cue coloring on the left with an isomap dimensionality reduction embedding. The brain, you can compare uh, the brain connectomes with the native colorings for the different uh, dimensionality reduction embeddings. And and uh, there are also uh, animations for the selected and connected nodes. You can control the amplitude and frequency of those. So when when you visualize the when I import up uh, uh, this Allen uh, Neurogenomics data set, it's uh, I downloaded it here. Um, it, uh, Contains both MRI and microarray data for these uh, eight donors. Uh, four of them have uh, diffusion tensor imaging, so I extracted their connectomes using the, the, the DTIT1T2 weighted MRIs. And they also have microarray data, so they have 62,000 probes. Per profile, per, per donor, per brain, and they have 500 samples per hemisphere, so that's about a thousand samples per brain. Uh, and, and so they, have, they also have, they have the, they map the uh, 3D uh, coordinates of the samples with the MRI. So I import all of that data, so I now have the uh, the 3D coordinates of all the samples, which I'm displaying here, and uh, in the foreground of this uh, the scene, and in the background, I have a view map uh, dimensionality reduction embedding of the genes with their co-expression values uh, from a WGC and a Hierarchical clustering uh, weighted gene co expression network analysis. Uh, so, I'm going to, in, uh, in this view, I'm going to uh, switch to have the gene UMAP analysis in the foreground, and in the background, way back there, that's the, uh, the brain. And, and so, I have the brain. Uh, the brain regions are displayed as spheres, and the gene, the gene uh, lift markers are cubes there. So I can decouple, unlink the boxes and cube in spheres in the left and right sides, and so I can adjust the sizes to optimally display
So now uh, we can do a, a, a search. I have a search uh, box that I've enabled so I can search for a gene that I'm interested in, like SLC, that's the, uh, from this, uh, this is, uh, let's see, I'm looking for some monoamine transporter genes. So it looks like uh, the gene symbols SLC, and you can see that they have a web interface to their data with a heat map there. Uh, so I'm going to have that data visualized as a node link diagram graph over here. So this is lighting up and selecting the SLC genes and, and it's displaying the edges uh, display uh, show what genes co-express with them and also the edges that go over to the these brain uh, glyphs in the background they uh, the, this scene here shows how they uh, connect to brain regions that express these uh, genes. So I'm going to keep clicking this. I'm going to find all the SLC genes. So that, that stands for the uh, uh, solute carrier family. That's the Romano Annies. These are all the genes that I'm interested in. And, seeing the uh, brain regions that they're connected, that they're expressed in, and the uh, genes that co-express with them. I'm just going to keep clicking these and get as many of these as I can. Okay, that's, that's, that's probably enough. Now, at this point, I can adjust the weights. So I have the intergroup weight, uh, which is the weights uh, linking the genes to the areas they're expressed in. So I can show more or less of those. They're adjusting these weights. In the intragroup weights, I can set them to show the edges that connect the genes that co-express with one another. And I can change the threshold mode uh, so that it just displays the five or ten most high, uh, top, the top connected genes and the brain regions. So if I'm, uh, if I'm not interested in intergroup uh, edges, then I can click those away with that checkbox. Now I'm only seeing the intergroup edges. I haven't selected any brain regions yet. So I can set the opacity of the edges down so that they're kind of transparent. And I can turn on these, these animations so I can have the frequency and amplitude of these pulsating things so I can make the, those, uh, those lifts stand out. And now I can see which brain areas are affected without having uh, all of the edges cluttering up the scene. And I can select them. So 
So maybe if I want to, I'm interested in the ones in the forebrain, got the superior frontal gyrus there. And, orbital gyres. So I can see the edges that are connecting them and then the, uh, and then the, the, the I can see the edges that uh, represent the connectome connectivity of these uh, high monoamine transporter expressing genes. You can also see genes that can express with the monoamine transporters. There's a lot of uh, exploration and browsing analysis that can be done. Uh, we also have, we can uncouple the, we can unlink the, uh, unlock the left and right cover scheme. So we can keep the left anatomical coloring. And we can color the genes, the gene uh, UMAP embedding based on something else. Or maybe we can keep uh, and keep that one. Or yeah, maybe uh, that one can be this uh, combined signed and unsigned WGCNA uh, clustering colors. And on the left, maybe we can do a degree a uh, connectivity range, so we can we can uh, so we can maybe uh, ray out the low connectivity, the low degree connectivity brain areas and filter out the ones that are highly connected. And we can find the most highly connected areas of the brain. And let's do the second highest. All right, so it looks like the superior frontal gyrus and the middle frontal gyrus are in the medium high connectivity range. And they, they have a high degree of expression in these monoamine uh, transporters. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's what we learned today in this uh, Allen Brain Institute uh, neurogenomic data set analysis using Nervegate. Well, thanks for your attention.